Living Seed Media brings to you God's Word, which is His comprehensive equipment for changing lives. May the Lord impact your heart as you encounter His Word. For further inquiry or counsel, contact Peace House, P.O. Box 971, Boko, Benue State, Nigeria. Telephone numbers 0703-0363659-0703-768118. Email address lsmedia at livingseed.org or visit our website at www.livingseed.org. Let us sit back and listen as the servant of God brings forth the word of life. Our Father, tonight we thank you for all that you have made us We give you all the honor and praise for the experiences you have been giving us into. We thank you for speaking in our situation at every point. We give you honor for our Bible study. We thank you for that which you taught us about the Corpus Altar. We exalt you, O God, even for the prayer opera for our children, the children of families. Lord, we thank you for the seminar where you addressed us, looking at the help that you are making us to be, and the help that you are making for us in our lives. Lord, we thank you for the purpose discussion, veritable testimonies that you have allowed us to touch again out of lives of brothers and sisters who have followed this principle for this several years. Lord, we want to stand in your presence tonight as we are drawing this day into a close that Father speak to us again. We ask that your word that has been coming to us will keep finding space, will keep mixing with faith in our hearts, that every segment of the issues that you are intending to show us for our matrimony to become effective and profitable. Lord, we are praying hide nothing from us. Speak to us with simplicity. Speak to us with clarity. And speak to us in a way we can understand. Thank you. Thank you, God, that we are not going to become dull of hearing. Our ears will not be the itching ears. We will hear you and obey you. When we are concluding the song that we sang, say, trust and obey. Whatever it says to you, do it. For several issues you have been raising, give us opportunity to respond to you. So that in years to come, several of us again will be leading several couples, several couples into their own rest. We'll be guiding others into what we have done in our lives. Thank you, Father. In Jesus Christ's name, we are praying. Amen. The response the response of a right husband or maybe I should say the right response the right response of a husband in order to set your family on course the right relevant correct response for a husband to set his family on course. Yesterday, Brother Tewazi began to show us that the Holy Spirit was leading according to Scripture that in Genesis chapter 3, even after the fall, God said to the woman, even though in sorrow you are going to conceive and bring forth children yet 
your affection shall be to your husband and he shall rule over you. And he took us to the book of Esther and noted a decree that was meant to be circulated all over the world in all languages that every man should bear the rule over his own house. And we went further to look at 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and then chapter 11 where we were looking at that great organogram and even tonight Sister Shade again refers to it and said God's order said the head of the of, of the woman, the head of the wife is the husband. And the head of every man is Christ. And the head of Christ is God. That, that was how God wanted it to be. So this night I will begin as I will begin because that response I want to deal with tonight we will not finish because it has several applications but we would like to begin it because the more we understand that if the head refuses to be ahead there will be confusion everywhere if the head does not give the correct response. What will happen is that the capacity and the potential of a woman will be wasted. And having listened to a very clear instruction to the woman that you are a helper and that if you did not serve God as a helper equipped and prepared for him you have only wasted life and wasted the grace of God as I sat down listening to those very very heavy words and I know that the reason why many women are finding difficult to respond to this truth is because the men to whom they were going to pour all their grace, all their strength, all their capacity, all their potential have not given space. They have not given right responses Plus, the Lord was going to be leading us tonight I want to be looking at the right response of a husband in order to set his marriage on course I decided to call it response rather than call it responsibility. But you know that there is no responsibility until you respond. If you actually know that the word responsibility is only a, a it came from response. Praise the Lord. Eh? If they say somebody is responsible, they are simply saying it's a person that brings right response to a situation when demands come. If they look at someone and say he is not responsible, the only, the only thing they are saying is that when we needed him to respond to a situation, he did not. I don't know whether you follow me. I'm not in an English class, but the English specialist, they will be helping me later on to correct whatever mistake I'm making on this matter. But I know that a responsible man is a man that gives correct response to situation. An irresponsible man is a man who does not respond when he is expected to do so. 
But I don't want to talk about responsibility of, of a husband tonight. I only want to talk about the right response. Because I don't want to be talking of responsibility, responsibility. I want to talk about what you do. I want to talk about your response. What is the right response of a husband to set his marriage on course? You will go back with me to the same text. You know that this text is so rich that no matter how we have been digging into it, it looks inexhaustible. And it's not that we are twisting the scripture. We are simply allowing it to unfold before our eyes. And I told you that that thing that you saw in Genesis, it gives to us the original principles that every other thing you want to do as far as marriage is concerned you have to return to it because it is the worthy standard that God has set that's why we are digging it that's why we are seeking to understand it that's why we are praying that God will give us insight and revelation into how to respond to the word of God tonight are you there with me Genesis chapter 2 we have been reading verse 18 but now we are going to read verse 23 verse 24 and verse 25 verse 23 24 and 25 when I'm ready to illustrate it, we might take some other parts of scriptures that will help us illustrate what we are talking about. Praise the Lord. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh she shall be called woman because she was taken out of man therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall become or they shall be one flesh and they were both naked the man and his wife and they were not ashamed may the lord bless his word again in our midst tonight in the name of jesus christ jesus amen you know we began to look at what God said and what God committed himself to do and how God engaged his capacity to make a help for the man and we noted how God brought out unto the man but now we are looking at what is the man's correct response. And the little grammar I try to do was to say to you that there is no responsibility without response. If they say you are responsible, it's because you have responded. If they say man is irresponsible, that means when he is supposed to respond, he did nothing. So tonight I'm dealing with what response must you as a husband bring forth in order to set your marriage on course, in order to release your marriage and release your wife and bring them to what they ought to become. I'm praying that God 
in his mercy will allow us to have clear utterance about this even now. And Adam said, I want you to first know that. And Adam did what? Say it. May I say to you that every husband has the responsibility of speaking and uttering correct words that gives direction that gives definition that gives focus in every marital relationship for your marriage to be on course it is your responsibility to speak clearly. Several husbands mistakenly think and for most of us we always think and say I thought you should have known. I thought I told you. And many, many times your wife will say, No, you didn't say it. I didn't know when you said it. The reason is because we are for the man. Words may never mean much. Words may just mean just an expression of an idea. But for your wife to have direction in life, your words are weighty. Your words are defining. The words of a husband is what gives definition to the wife. It is what gives focus to the wife. It is what gives rest to the wife. Your words, they are treasure to your wives. This is why we are asked men may never put so much value on words. Your wife is different. If again, like I've always made the experiment, if I were to make an experiment here tonight, you will discover Maybe we can do it. I want wives to please help me out here because we are an issue that is important. The letter that your husband wrote to you when you were caught in the letter that to you when you were caught in when he was coming around as, as cracking the wall. Where is that letter now? Somebody should please stand up and tell me. I need a sister to tell me. Where are you? Eh? They are under your bed. Up till now. Hallelujah. How long ago did he write that letter? Eh? Twenty solid years ago, the letter is under her bed. Hallelujah. I'm coming. Who else want to remind us or help me? Yes, Auntie. 
and what no one my marriage will be 45 hello hello god your marriage 45 years in august, 45 years, in august. Uh -huh. 45 years uh, later now yeah yeah me come back i have let the marriage we have a beautiful picture from the jeep Whereby your, 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 your mom will write to this and post it to the top and we we'll get to you. We still in my bed today. It's here. Hallelujah. 45 years ago, the card you sent is in the box. When you have to put it in the post, that post card, the beautiful photo in front, the plane at the back, and you write. I, I would not worry you to tell me exactly what you wrote that time, but I know, <laughs> I know you are putting it. Yes, another one here. Please come and give the microphone to another sister because I want you to understand. Something that is very important. Two weeks ago, my marriage was 30 years. Two weeks ago, your marriage was 30 years. But I have a letter of 34 years. A letter of 34 years. Years ago. Anytime I want to get phone in the home, and my husband is not saying, your lovely, my dear, very dear, I will fetch the letter and bring it out and start reading. And say, yes. And the children will laugh. Say, my very dear Otini. And uh, he's not saying that again. My dear Otini. Yes, you are not saying it again. Yes. Where's Mr. Where's Ateji? Ateji, stand up now. Stand up now. Stand up now. Come out and tell them. <laughs> he's not saying it regularly again. Hallelujah. <laughs> are you with me? <laughs> you see what we are talking about is that for women the words you say matters a lot if I were to ask a brother here can you remember <laughs> can Brothers, please tell the truth now. Tell the truth. The letters that they wrote. Where is it now? Where is it? He can't even remember that there was a letter like that. What we are noting is that we are asked for a man. He can just speak. And you will forget what he said. The reason is because words don't carry the same value in a man's heart as it does with a woman. And you may not know that the words that you speak is a, a bond. It's your responsibility. And your wife captures it and keeps it. Sometimes she opens those old accounts and you read just like Sister Tini just I don't know how I could have felt. You are the only hope. Really just to tell you, I can't do without you. And the wife, for forty-four years, for twenty years, for years, 
But what you didn't even know is that you did not only keep it under the bed or keep it in the box or keep it. It has lodged somewhere. And every time you came back to say something that is not congruent with what you said before, you used to be surprised that your wife would say, that is not what you said before. Sometimes you are surprised that your wife would say, this is not how you used to speak. I used to speak. I don't used to speak. Don't close my mouth. No, 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 no. no, no. She's referring to an account. A treasure. And that same treasure sometimes is a trash. But whether you say something that is good or you say something that is bad, it has the same effect. It only takes God to help a woman to destroy the trash. Otherwise, it So when the Bible begins to speak to a husband and say, husband, do not be harsh with your wife. God was speaking about something that is very critical. It is because the woman's heart and the woman's life is governed by what she hears, by the words that you speak. Some of you think that what the woman treasures most is the money or is the clothes. No! If you give your wife a cloak and your word that preceded it was a, a bad word, she will never wear that cloak. Because every time she wants to wear the cloak, the first thing that will come back to her is what you said. So my first focus tonight is to deal with the correct response in what you say to set your marriage on course. And Abraham did what? Say. You will notice that as we were going to be looking at scripture, it was what Adam said. We seem not to have heard anything that the woman said in that chapter. And if you will take responsibility for speaking rightly, for speaking defining words, which I want to analyze quickly now, for speaking accurately, so much will be released in your marriage. But do you know that the power of life and of death, the Bible says, where is in the tongue. Many, many brothers, by the words of their mouth, they have crippled their marriage. By the words of their mouth, they have slashed what God was putting together for their life. And they are wondering why am I not getting the best. And Adam said, so I first wanted to know that it is your responsibility to 
and not to speak carelessly but to speak words that edify to speak words that minister grace to your wife the words that comes out of your mouth means much more than millions to your wife When she has finished dressing, you may think that she's just dressing and dressing to go out. No, 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 no. no. She needs to hear a word from you. But unfortunately, several brothers, they seem not to have eyes to see anything beautiful. Or even if they see, they are very stingy with correct words. To simply say, that is very nice. You look cute. That releases something in your wife. But since you said no, are you ready? Let's go. You may not know that that little thing you are saying has done something, has scattered that woman. So with all that I dress, he didn't even see it. How terrible it is that it is only when you get to church that another fellow, another person, not you, he say, oh, madam, you look gorgeous. And when you saw her smiling and saying, hey, thank you very much, sir. thank you very much, sir. you are wondering. Because you are a man whose mouth damages. Sometimes your silence is as killing. Do you know that when your wife has finished making her egg, you hear me? She is rushing to come home. And at that time, she will remove the egg. What, sister, what are you waiting for? Talk to me, talk to me so that they can hear. You are waiting for him to say something. But this man is too busy. He's looking into the computer. He's uh, reading. He may even be reading Bible. And the wife said, this man has no eye to see. So sometimes you know your wife. When she cannot keep quiet. He said, you didn't even comment about my ear do. I said, so what? I so what? Is this the first time you are making a... Imagine such a damaging word. You might think it is spirituality and that you are protecting holiness. No! You are a damager. <laughs> yes. You see, it is because you need a response to set your wife on to release her potential to increase her confidence. A wife is not confident until she hears a word. A wife requires an affirmation for her to be sure God ordained it like that. It is not a weakness 
both a manufacturer's design. And we've got to understand the biblical basis in order for our marriages to run on The reason why you hear many, many wives, they are crying. It's not for hunger. The cry is for communication. The wife is longing to hear you speak into her life, into what she's doing. She may be highly educated, she may have PhD, but that does not remove that need in her life. You may think because your wife is a permanent secretary in the office that she does not need that affirmation. You made a mistake. And the reason why so many young girls fall into the wrong hand of charlatan is simply those who knew how to play with words. Even though they didn't mean it, but it's like a magic. The way it will make your daughter restless. If you see girls developing in your house, you will see the difference between the girl and the boy. You will see the girl coming over and over again and say, Daddy, do you like my dress? The boy will not say that. The boy will wear his dress and go and play football. But the, the small girl is waiting for affirmation and confirmation. It's the manufacturer's design. And Adam did what? Said. So let me ask you, what are you saying? What do you say day by day to your wife? Or do you wake up and forgot to say something? Did you just walk out and you have said nothing? Or when we are expecting you to speak, you just decided to say something that has no relevance. And Adam said, that is But now let me go to what did he say? Can we check what he said? Do we think we should go to what he said? And Adam said, This is now. I want you to see three important words. This. What's the meaning of the word this? Eh? This one. This precisely. This particular one. This singular one. This. And do you know that? There is never a time you want to use the word this. Are you hearing me? And your hand, your finger, almost without thinking, your finger just rock, comes out and points at something you can touch. If you want to say this is mine, how do you do it? How do you do it? You are putting your hand on it. What is the difference between this and that? <laughs> eh? You 
You see the one that is, you say that. Far. Unaccessible. Is that. So you can never, you can never say this without putting your finger on what you are talking about. When he said this is my bones, I can just see his hand and the shoulder of Mary, I mean of, of the wife. I can see how he put his finger said, Can I find out from you, sisters how you feel honestly? When your husband eh? Eh? in the midst of people stood up and bring out his heart and place it on your neck and say, This is my wife. Talk to me. How do you feel? Sister, don't 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 hide your feeling now. Tell me how do you feel? Eh? Now tell me how you feel. When your husband stands up in the church or in a meeting or in the public and he stood up and he said, Praise the Lord. We thank God for every one body that is here. God is good. Hallelujah. Uh, I thank God for the way the word of God has been moving. And, uh, and people on the mother had to come when they greeted him shaking finish they even forgot that you came with him are you understanding and it is after a long time Somebody said, excuse me is, is, is that madame is that madam? Oh, yes, that's madam. That's madam. How do you feel, dear sister? Please talk to me. I want your husband to hear. If you don't talk to me now, your husband will think you don't know. How do you feel? You feel bad. You feel neglected. You feel ignored. You feel as unimportant and irrelevant. But that's what you have been doing. That's how damaging it is. So your wife doesn't know where do I belong? To whom am I? This man has, has done everything and I can't see him say this is my wife. And you know how terrible it is for you to be your wife. That you have to be struggling. To say, excuse me. Sister, if you don't know, I am his wife. I hope you know it's terrible. When a woman, a wife, has to do that, it means she has become agitated. It means that jealousy is rising inside of her. So the way this girl is sitting here, as if this man has no wife. Let me just go there now and show my face. I know sometimes husbands you don't like it when your, your wife just walks in and it's not that you want to say anything no. you just want to interrupt what you are doing and walk about and then when she finished you say darling when are you coming home you know she's saying something if you are not responsible enough to let this girl that is sitting before you know that this is the bone of your bones i better go and tell them before they think nobody was around many wives are restless because you are stingy I'm not saying you are stingy with money. 
The greatest trouble that many people have had that made their marriages never to balance for a long time is their stinginess with words. It is only when light is out in the, in the, in the, in the dark bedroom then he will come in like a gnat. And then he will be stretching hands. You know, like that. Hey, you know, I love you. I love you. What does that mean? What does that mean? Talk to me now, brother. What does that mean in the dark? What does it mean when nobody is hearing? What kind of I love you is that? A woman you deny it in the public. You forgot her in the crowd. You only came home and said, <laughs> That's why you see your wife just removed that right hand and just straighten it. And then you say, This woman is difficult. She is not. My God, am I in trouble tonight? <laughs> Should I continue this message? <laughs> And the man said, This, this, this public identification, particular identification, peculiar identification. I said, Public, particular. Peculiar identification. It releases your wife and sets your marriage on course. It defines your marriage and it makes no one to take it for granted. It lifts it above every controversy and it immediately insulates it from interruption. So when the man opened his mouth and said, This, this is a singular identification. A focus identification. This is you can't say this is without your finger on her. What it means that she's been singled, singled out of the crowd. I'm happy that. We have insisted that you must sit with your wife, tall or short. I hope you will continue this when you go home. Eh? I hope everywhere you are going, when you want to sit down, you are putting your hand and said, we are sitting. You put your hand and said, this is my wife. She has to sit here before I sit. Then they will start knowing. We can't find one seat for this man. They must find two seats because he is going to come with his wife. I said, focus. This is if you will not focus on the help that God has given you 
how do you want to maximize it? If you would behave as if she's just one woman among many women, how will she know how relevant, how useful, how indispensable she is in your life? Those of you that I know, they are preachers. I see how you are eagerly identify with people outside. Some of these uh, prayer warrior sisters. You say, well, you know, she prays. She prays so much. She's the killer of my ministry. You're a that woman is not a killer. She's a dungeon. If God does not turn your eyes from her, she will finish you. He starts prophesying to me. He starts saying there's an attack from death. But when she was praying the other day, she just saw that there's an arrow. There's an arrow. And I said, come away. Is this arrow coming from? I said, is it arrow coming from? I said, is it arrow she said, when I pray for that, I pray for that, I was just agonizing in the spirit. I was just agonizing in the spirit. And I saw it. And the Lord just said, tell me to the camera. That's a dangerous prophet. If you want to hear my counsel, stand up immediately. Send for your wife. And tell the madam, hey, sister, stop the prayer. Stop that prayer you are praying. This is the bone of my bones. This is the one my God has ordained to help me out. I thank you for your prayer. For prayer. Did you hear what my wife said this evening? Did you hear her? Eh? She said many people are praying for God. But there is none of all those prayers that is so special so adapted so peculiar that's what she does for me I have to learn that from God I have to understand that that ah, you and you have millions of prayer supporters they don't equal what she needs down to cry to God God. 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 the Lord help to understand what God. I'm talking about the right response of the husband to set his house in order to set his marriage in order now he said this this Take note that the word this is not this. Did you hear me? What does the word this signify? Singular. Singular. Not two, not three, not four. One. With whom God has tied my destiny. One in whom all the help that God has packaged for me to be complete had been put. It takes a personal understanding to focus. This is. Many husbands have not yet focused on their wife. Your eyes are still up and down. And you know when I say your eyes are up and down, I'm not saying you are looking for women. No. I'm not saying that you are flirting about. That's not what I'm talking about. Some are like that, but I'm not talking about flirting men. I'm talking about men whose eyes are not yet focused on what God has put in their food. They are busy running at and skelter looking for what others can do for them. 
If the wife wants to say something, keep quiet. What do you know? This is. And I said, that is a language of singularity and single focus. For your marriage to release its full potential, you must focus on this woman that God has given you. You must focus on her life. You must focus on her growth. You must focus on her release. You must focus on her development. If she's going to be nourishable tomorrow, you must focus on nourishing her. If you don't nourish this, you will get nothing out of it tomorrow. And yet it is not because she does not carry potential. There is a potential damage. Is a potential wasted, is a potential blocked. This is when you have come to know the implication of this is the bone of my bones, the flesh of my flesh. When that has become clear to you, you will settle down. Husband, do you plan to be great? Settle down. Settle down. Do you want something that is glorious in the coming days? Settle down. Don't take your marriage lightly anymore. Don't think as if where I married her, let me just go around. No. This is. When Adam came to that, he came to a place of focus. What I'm struggling with to say to you tonight is that many of you married for 20 years, but you've never focused on the development of your wife. You have not focused on what she will become in order to help me. Maybe this is why you have not focused prayers on her. This is why you have not focused affection. You have not focused everything that you can input to make her who she should be. When the Holy Ghost, I sat in my office, Sister Nkaro, you know when Sister Nkaro, that should be 1988 or something. I sat in the office, I've been working since morning till about 7 p.m. And the Holy Ghost asked me a question, where is your wife? You know, in my head, I just simply as she's in the hospital, she's walking. I think she's on call. The Holy Spirit said, I'm not saying, I'm not asking you where she is in the hospital. I'm asking you, where is your wife in the scheme of what I've already told you? I couldn't stand up from that office again. I said, I said, God, what are you talking about? God said, that this woman is the one I have sent it to your mind to make you enter into everything I'm talking to you about. Where is she? Where is she? It was then God began to ask me. This Bible study outline you have been preparing. Where is she in his preparation? 
It was then it dawned on me that how would God give me a help and I'd be blessed. I was impassionate about it. it. When I rose from that office that day, I rushed to the house. The first question I said, Where are you? She asked me, said, What's happening? I'm always at home. I'm asking for your location. That day, I remember. I began to tell her. I said, Look, this hospital is not the reason why God brought you. She said, but you know, since, since you are busy, and you not, uh, involved in so like just a little bit of a little bit of a a no, 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 no. It will not be like yes, that. Yeah. Then the Lord said, <laughs> If you train her, the things that have called you to do, she will help you better. Focus. I cannot thank God enough <laughs> for that evening. When God began to show me that if you will not be particular, if you will not focus, you will never get the best of what I put in half of you. I thank God today. I thank God for the capacity that the Holy Spirit is releasing to me through her. It's difficult to explain. But you see, it is your response that will bring it out. I pray that the Holy Ghost will give you a clear picture of what I'm saying tonight. I don't know when you will keep having time to quarrel and to keep marrying for one week or for two days or for one month. If you know that inside her is locked up very valuable thing that you cannot do without. This is the boom. Now, when she now began to speak, I now see not only a conviction, but was now coming out of a conviction. This is the bone of the Lord. You see, the language is used. Thank God that we are doing. Becoming, uh, becoming one flesh in the Bible study and that has helped me. I don't need to go over that again. I know in the Bible study you will have noted the matter of becoming one flesh that the man came with an understanding. This is not somewhere from somewhere. This is the whole woman. This woman is, is an expression of something in me that is internal that people may never see. What has affected my heart about my own marriage is that the only person that feels the way I feel internally the only one person that bears the pains of my life 
as if it were her pains. This woman. Every other person are my sympathizers. Did you hear me? You are not hearing me. Who is a sympathizer? A sympathizer is somebody who is trying to identify externally with your pain, which is not really with you. So you stand and say, sorry, is it pain when he has, is he paying you that's to show you that he's not paying you her? Am I correct? She's only a sympathizer. And thank God that maybe sympathy is useful at a certain level. But sympathy is not what I need. I need someone like they describe Jesus. They say we do not have a man that cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities. In that in all points he had been tempted just like we are. He had taken part of the same so that he could be a merciful person. That's what so one day when God was speaking to me, he said, Look, all the people you share your prayer requests with, thank God for them. But for majority, it is when they see you coming that they are praying. When they are going, what happens? They continue their normal business. But there is one. My mother says in the kitchen. Lord, help us. Help us help when she's in the bathroom, I don't know what happens. When they are turning her malattie, I don't know what happens. Her prayer has no particular purpose. I was telling a story to our resource person on some dangerous omission when I began to neglect the woman of my room because I had friends. The day God was going to finish the matter, ah, it was wonderful. Anytime I meet my friend, I forget that I have a wife. We will talk and 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 that's a Yoruba You become a talkative. See, that's why you know, no, 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 no. So gradually, I saw my wife beginning to adjust. I didn't know I was killing something. Uh, so one day we went for, you remember the journey with your and we're coming back in a convoy. And my brother and to arrange and the president we were driving and we were in a car as usual with my friend. And we got to take care. 
I work again the root and avandekia. I gabi gala avandekia. We had a tire puncture. Tire any where bamboo. There was no. There was no. Where you go? Spare tire. Tire also any G. You know we used to drive by faith. I can any motor in the car. We are all in the convoy side. If we have a tire problem, I will just come back and you just bring your own tire. No sir, no gami you. They didn't look why wasn't the other car? They said, Don't worry. terrible a man whose wife cannot say, say my husband is there no and you will be here at the time. You know that day, no matter how I prayed in tongues, didn't get anybody to go wrong. There was no forkanizer to help us. Where the things stopped. Yeah, 6 a.m. mosquito face. So when people started opening their shop, we got somebody who got By the I was coming back to Nkari for 10 a.m. the following day. You know the first if nobody look back, why not my wife? So I was coming home. I was going to say, <laughs> I say hey, you slept? My wife says something that I can never forget. She said, you trained me. I already concluded that you may even decide to sleep whenever you see your friend. She didn't say more than that. I went in. The Holy Spirit said, did you see what you have become? You have become a man that nobody will look for. You will be the woman that I closed in your life so that you will never be lost. With tears, I bowed before God. Say, God, I have missed this. I repented. I said, Lord, I said, Lord, I said, Lord, I said, Lord, I I Do you know that if you die now, only one woman with a would be a widow? You are not answering me. Everybody else will come and go. After two, three days, your house will be empty. She will be the only one. Why will you not focus on that with God has planted into your life and say, Lord, this is the bone of the bones. You must focus. Identification. So I'm now going on to the next thing. What is the next response? Focused definition. If you don't define your wife, your marriage, we have no definition. If you will not. Give definition to the woman God has given you. 
your marriage also will never have a clear definition and you do not have a clear destination. This is the bone of my bone, the flesh of my flesh. She shall be called. Who named the woman? Who named the woman? It is your response, responsibility to give your wife a correct identity. I am not talking about pet names. Honey. That's not what I'm talking about. And I'm not against it. But I'm talking about something more grievous. What do you call your wife? What do you call your wife? Before disciples. What do you call your wife? In the midst of your church members. What do you call your wife? In the presence of your relatives. What do you call her? But you see what I wanted to talk about. I wanted to say. What did you call for in her? Because when you, identi when you give identity to a man. When you give a name to something. The name calls for that personality. Sometimes small, small children they try me. Small babies, small children. Some of my staff children. I love them. Small children, four years, five years, three years. I see them. Even because they always see me on the television uh, when their parents are listening to a message or something so they always see on Kubili are you understanding? so some of those children one of them they want to prove if they are colleagues that you know me they know my name and they will be angry with themselves they will not know that I'm hearing them they will not know that I'm hearing them when one of them that is breaking up with Joseph. Uncle Gule! <laughs> and you know, when a four-year-old call me like that, Uncle Gule! He said that he wants to greet you. He will call like that and he will run away. <laughs> I got him, I call him by his name. I call him by his name. And of course, you know when they call me like that, that even no matter what I'm doing, I'm doing, I'm doing I call something. <laughs> yes, I am. I am. Come and check me. Then he will bring that to me. And check And you know, if you will run and tell the mother, I will sob on Kugwile and shoot him and call his name. And the mother is like, hey, you are not afraid. You are too long with his name. Why do you do that? Is that not his name? Brother, what do you call your wife? What are you calling for out of your wife? What are you releasing your wife to become? This is the bone of my bones, flesh of my flesh. She will be called woman. She has been taken out of me. me. I say to say anything you see in me. What you see me be. That you ever want to respect me. That's the that's the one that is making me that's the one that has helped me up. that's the one that fills my gaps so when Patrick Obodo was giving this testimony yesterday with his wife how he had to continue to stay refining his life to his people, to his parents, to his brothers, to his siblings, 
to continuously until the mother and the father now know that if you are looking for a daughter this is your until they will no longer what they could not tell other children they will tell Christy and say if he come let me tell you something what do you call her? what are you calling for in your wife what is it that she's you are expecting her to come up with the response of the man this is did you see that there's a because there Say because she was taken out of man. 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 Because she man. was looking for a new definition. Did you see that the definition oh, change? The name okay. change in Genesis 3. Have you noticed that in Genesis 3 she said, and she will be called what? Eve. What is Eve? What is Eve? It was a terrible downgrading. Oh, because she was the mother of all the as it to say she won't have identity if she has children. But if she has children, 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 and I know that you have not called your wife properly. And you know what I'm talking about? It's not to say that you understand you are here. No. And I'm not asking you to go and introduce your wife. I say, all of you in this church, this is your mother. This is that same woman that at home you shout her. Don't go and do that kind of thing. It's a real thing. When you are imposing your wife, other women are saying, What do you want to do? I'm talking about what? Laji was speaking about how God began to put value upon joy in his heart. When God began to introduce his wife to him and said, Do you know that the most valuable thing I'm putting in your life is this woman. You are not even qualified to have her. My wife was asking me, what were you, what were you reading? I was, I, I, I ran back to the, to the house and picked the book. Speaking at the I had to write. Many years ago. Or two to four garaga. Because it just don't know. Makana or Biaram Nahuaza. Did I write it? Like that? Mm -hmm. that? Mm -hmm. I say, it's true. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I said, I said, I said, I said, I I I felt when my eyes opened, I felt very, very unqualified to have God put such a treasure in my life. He gave my wife told me that she was going to sign her job. I just I said, what's paid for? 
Enjoy or makage me. Will you not be redundant? Email to her. Will you not say I can't spell on you? Kiti ati kalasi mo mori re para. Mando mado. Everybody behind me respect this doctor. Na bokwa mo wa meregi. One man came furiously to my house. You're a wicked man. You're a wicked man. I said what I'm going to say. You took away. This doctor that delivered us. What ministry are you talking about? What ministry are you doing? You're a wicked man. My wife will have died, not because, if not because of this woman, your wife, that delivered her. My child will have been crippled, if not because of this woman, that helped us. And you are saying that there's one ministry. ministry. What ministry is that? Wicked man. And before I could talk, he drove his machine and went in his hands. And I gave him his hands to me. He said, I'm going to miss you. 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 I'm going to miss you. So I can pray. Pray. Just to pray. To be the help. But I know you. Since your first time. Has never given you a Your husband has rubbished you. He has made it look as if. Well. And he is rubbished ejeje Husbands, the right response, you must name your wife. You must give her identity. What are you calling for? That of that Don't let her be crippled. Don't allow her to waste away as if, as if God made a mistake. The potential. The potential. What is the last response? The Lord will permit me to follow this doctor tomorrow. Therefore, shall a man do what? Leave his father and his mother. You see, by the time we came to this passage, our dinner is now But I'm not going to because our Bible study is dealing with it. Therefore, shall a man, when you have discovered what is this bone of your bones, this flesh of your flesh, there is no other understand my native tongue the one from my village 
I will say Wayema. I no last to see your back. I na so Wayema. 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 It's more than. Oh. It's more than Falama. Oh, Karere Falama. It's more than hold tightly to it. Oh, Karere Jigide Shiaike. Not only your hand. Hey, oh, putara mna obo na ni makagi mezegi. Bite it with your teeth. Oh, masegi jiraz egi taya. So that if anybody wants to take her away, that one that you hold with your teeth, it will either cut into your mouth or it will cut into your mouth. It will cut into your mouth. It will cut into I'm talking about the height of holding tightly, of cleaving. I said this one must not fall out of my hand. This one must not be wasted. This one I must not miss out. This one, nothing must come in between us. The correct response. The correct response. Response of cleaving. Response of holding tightly, response of protective holding, response of a deliberate, committed, hanging on, both with your hand and with your teeth, because this. Is the bone of my bones, the flesh of my flesh. I will come back on that verse. I got my last two questions. Now, more concrete, I don't want to put it as one of the questions. That we can try make a man of bones. Two of them. But I want you to see the order. I'm not talking about. Can you read for me? I'm not talking about. Thank you. I'm 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 talking about. Who was naked first? And his wife. And they were not ashamed. And they were not embarrassed. They were not embarrassed. He was happy. No, kaha, all na toyota, all maseria. To identify with her. Ka, all we bro. Whatever she is. That's the bone of my bones. How many of you are proud of the woman you married? How many of you? Upon, once upon a time, you feel ashamed. You think that she's not. When it is time to introduce us, uh, my wife and husband, uh, so let me speak for her. So you feeling bad. I wish I married that man. I don't know what you are talking about. Sometimes you are ashamed. She's too dark. You're just saying one that is very yellow. Sometimes you come back, you talk to your wife. You go for the latter. Don't you see other sisters? What do you see about them? Eh? White wash sepulchre. Do you believe with any of those ones you are talking about? In one day, you are not. You are not. You are not. And they were both what? Naked. When you have understood what I'm talking about, you just need to open up. Open up. Open your life up. 
let her have opportunity <inaudible> to explore you in your neighborhood. <inaudible> and when your wife knows that my husband is open to me, she's been waiting for <inaudible> She's been waiting. Uh, she uh, will uh, tell uh, you uh, everything uh, because she now uh, has confidence. Uh, and a man uh, who cherishes uh, her and uh, he can kiss her. Uh, 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 I ask you to join me in prayer. But you know, as I was uh, looking at all of you, uh, 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 you might think uh, that Adam just na, said na it. Adam. Something happened to his own life. A regeneration took place in his own life. That deep sleep that God put him to that broke his bones that showed him his weakness that created hunger in his heart. If it does not happen to you, the natural aroma, the selfishness of natural man, the cover of mother, will never allow you to set your marriage in order. So as we will be praying tonight, if you have not experienced the touch of the Lord, if you have been intact, since you were born by your mother, you have not experienced the crucified Lord walking in your life to change you. That's the first thing. It is possible that your wife or your husband said, follow me to go. I said, well, let's go there. But not that you have encountered Jesus for your own life. Not that he has broken through your life and is producing a new man. You know that which is born of the flesh, the Bible says, is flesh. That which is born of the spirit, the Bible says, is spirit. Don't be surprised. You must be born again. You will be praying tonight for the right response of a husband to set his marriage on course and to maximize the profitability of your union. And I know that you are going to pray with me tonight to say, God, where I've been stingy, has spoken wrong words. I have entered short wave communication for too long. Where are you going to Where are you going to yeah. Where are you coming back? What of the things that we are talking about? What are we talking about? You already know, already know one syllable answer. shout out. And it is when you are going out. When the key is in your hand already for to pick your car. You now call a uh, Yabo. Come, 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 come. Tell your mother that I have That's a woman you, you want the same way. What do you have to say? You have avoided direct talk. And you are doing it deliberately. So we punish you. We punish her. You will punish her. If I put what you have said in the correct way, I will punish myself. I will punish myself. I will scatter 
will be doing damage to his wife. He does damage to himself. You're going to pray with me tonight, brothers and sisters. We are going to pray together. No, I didn't know this before. I didn't know it involves this kind of thing. I didn't know that this is what it means to be a husband. I did the kind of response. I will have all your responsibilities, but I don't want a big word. I just want your response. When you have responded to God, you will respond also to your wife and say, Oh, God, I didn't know this. The only thing that you have ever commented about was her mistake. When she does something very well, you never talk. It's only that thing that she did not do well that you are going to talk about. Then you are saying, what of her? What of her? She's always nagging. I tell you the, the secret of nagging. The secret of nagging is that when a woman has waited and all she hears is condemnation, her hunger for words what she's doing is not anything it's just for you to say something the moment you begin to talk you will see that she will and begin to enjoy what tonight we're going to pray Lord. The right response. Some of you knew about this superficial. Some of you got it wrongly by thinking it was a psychological statement. Some of you thought that all oh, they taught you in those uh, books. And when you wake up, tell your wife three times, I love you, I love you, I love you. 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 I there can be something bigger, something more glorious in my, my wife could be released better than what she is now. Where I have used wrong words, where I have withdrawn correct words, where I have made my wife to lament. Now, is this not the man that used to speak sweet words to my life before? Why am I hearing harsh words? Criticism. As if something has finished in his heart concerning me. Do you like to pray and say, God, this is us. Wives, have you yourself become embittered? Have you yourself become, you know, you have lost, you have lost you have lost focus on who you are and who you should be. You are beginning to react. You are now a shadow of what God will have wanted you to be. Can you pray and say, Lord, recover my life. Recover our marriage. Reset us, set us on course from this night. Please open your mouth and pray. Call on God. Call on God. There are many other issues God will be dealing with in the course of time. But for tonight, I think you should just pray with me. Just say, Lord, this thing that I'm hearing you, this thing that you are beginning to redefine for us, this thing you are beginning to speak about, we, we didn't know how, 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 how critical it was. But please help me. Uh, the Bible says the time of ignorance, God wins that. You please pray and say, Lord, 
do something new with me. Help me to understand. Help me to know that it is my responsibility to speak, to minister in words, words that minister grace. Seasoned words, seasoned with salt. Knowing how to speak to him that is weary. Please pray. Pray for God to help you right now. He said, This particular, peculiar, singular, this. A focus, identification with the woman that God has put in your life. Please pray. I know the Holy Spirit will give, will give increase to this as we go ahead. I know God Himself will make God has set down into smaller bits and it will begin to walk in our hearts. But I want you just to pray, just pray and say, Lord, as a husband, help me. Do you also please hold your wife tonight again? No, yesterday I made you to pray together. Tonight again I wish you would pray. Just hold that woman. As God, Lord, redefine this woman for me. Redefine this woman in my eyes and redefine my husband to me. Help me to know who I am supposed to be. What am I supposed to be in his life? Lord, open my understanding. Please pray as a wife, pray as a husband tonight. This thing we didn't know. This thing we have not been taught properly. We just spoke anyhow. Father, tonight, reset our marriage on course. Don't forget that there are people that married for 45 years in Amis. And somebody will say, What are they looking for again? Even if it remains just five more years, it can be better. The end of a matter is better than the beginning thereof. Pray! The many 30 something years of our own marriage, we are laying it down again and say, Lord, it can be better, it can be higher. You can move us beyond where we are. Please, Lord, walk in our hearts. Younger couples, can you cry to God? Help me to catch this well. Middle age couples, can you cry to God? We see several years ahead. Lord, please do a new thing for us. This couple's retreat must reset our marriage on course. Please pray. Please call on God. Thank you tonight. Thank you for hearing this prayer. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Father, tonight. Holy Spirit, please do your work. We have been hearing you speak in diverse ways. Please do your work now. Do your work deliberately. Carry us from where we are now. Husband that are too quiet. As to say nothing. They have made their wives unsure of where they stand. The wife is saying, I don't know where I stand with this man. Father, please change that for us tonight. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for hearing our prayer. While you are holding your hand together as husband and wife, leave those two hands together before God. And I want you to declare to God that which you have, you have 
brought to me as a wife. That which you have brought to me as a husband. I will not let it go. It's a treasure. I'm willing to forsake all to cleave unto. Lord, we renew our marriage covenant Lord, restore to me those gracious words that I, I used. It came out of my heart that time because I thought I was, I was trying to win somebody's affection. Lord, tonight, visit me again. Whatever damage has happened, can you release it, sister? Release it tonight and say it was an eternal of ignorance. Even me, myself, I didn't know. Do you like to call on God and say, Father, release me. Just release me. Everything that bounds me inside, let it be released from tonight. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Please go and pray. Take liberty to pray anyhow. Take liberty to hold one another before God. Take liberty to say, oh God. I have not placed value on our relationship. I have not yet defined what this woman should have been. I have not called forth in her the capacity of your grace. I have kept her at the periphery of things because I didn't think I needed it. Tonight, oh God, restore us. Restore me. Pray from the depth of your heart. Engage the hand, the hand of God, the hand that makes things correct. Engage him and say, Lord, help me tonight. Wives, can you engage God and say, Lord, help us tonight? Lord, when Brad Bile was speaking, as if he knew in my heart, Lord, help me tonight. Lord, help me tonight. Just pray, just pray. I know God is answering our prayer. I know the Holy Spirit is going to do more than we can ask or imagine tonight. Jesus. Mm. Lord, move in this meeting tonight. Move, O oh God. What I'm asking you to do, O oh God, is going to revolutionize our generation. Something will break forth from these marriages. Lord, I'm asking you for a redefinition. A release of their potentials. Liberty, liberty to be open to each other. They were both naked. Nothing to hide again. Lord, do it. Do it in this meeting tonight. Do it beyond us. Do it beyond our thinking. Sete yerebo satayama indaremo shenta baba Thank you tonight. Thank you. Holy Spirit, please walk your walk in this meeting. Do what only you can do. Only you can do what I'm asking you to do, Lord. Only you can do what no man can do. 
Thank you for hearing our prayer. Thank you for doing beyond us. Thank you for where you are going. Thank you for this deliberateness with which you decided to visit us in this retreat. Thank you. Lord, I pray that your word will run. I pray, Lord, that your word will prosper. I pray, O oh God, that the truth that sets me free will work in our midst. In Jesus' name, we are praying. Jesus. Thank you, Father. Dear brother, dear sister, there's just this last matter of prayer. Spiritual things are only spiritually designed. Actually, being faithful your partner and your and all is because your eyes have never opened the life that could carry this kind of instruction have it. Maybe religious Calvary. And you may look back and say, oh, religious has never set you back. All the trouble in many homes in the house. I am you are hard work and let go. Even if you keep quiet, you are waiting for the end of it. But I perceive the Lord is standing in the midst and say, yes, I have brought to you what I want to work with you. I'm not finished with you. I'm ready to forgive you and to give you the end of the day. Even though night after night, you know, have you brought the man of Calvary, Jesus, to Jesus. be the Lord of your life? Do you say that you the tonight? You Nobody could have known what I'm talking about between you and God. Sometimes you travel far away from the from your, from your city to happy so you can commit sin and get back as a to travel to God. Who knows that matter is a lot. God wants to forgive someone in the midst of God wants to change your soul. God wants to change your soul. Give you the marriage. marriage is not in heaven. Yet your marriage is not in heaven. Whether you're in the outside class, class you know you have to make the rest of the world tonight and say, Lord, it's me. Where are you? Please lift up your right hand. Today you pray. God has a purpose. He want to reset things. Some say, what you are saying, your home is too far. You are not too far. God can recover everything. Someone will be saying, ah, my situation. There may even be 
a child out of your wedlock. Now that as we are going to find a prayer, if this night you hear God saying, tonight is the night of restoration, that God has decided to help, to forgive, to cleanse, and to set to you loose. As I would like to pray finally, let me request that you please step out before God. Say, Lord, I just need to touch me one more time. Touch me, O oh God. And all will be well. The woman with the issue of blood was in trouble for 12 years. Jesus. If this night the Lord is saying, give me a space all things need. You've been here, but the Holy Spirit is saying, tonight Lift up that right hand and open your hand and say, Lord, I need you. Thank you, sir. It's me, Lord. It's me. And I need a touch. I need your touch tonight. The things that have been holding me back for me. I want you to resolve it for me tonight. God bless you. Thank you. Can I please respectfully request that you should come tonight and join hey, hands with you to your hands with prayer? Please stand up. Please pray to me. So please raise that right hand. Please pray. 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 You brought me here. Hey, well, me kick to to you thank, you. Thank, you. thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, 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 Thank Thank you, my friend. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, my friend. Please come. Please come. Please come. Thank you, my brother. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, brother. Thank you. It shall be well. Oh, God. God will make it work. Thank you. Thank you. To say, Jesus, I hand over to you. You are not coming to one who will read it. To you. Who will Come Thank you. I God will make it right. Never you worry about how much damage he can make all things right. Say, behold, I make all things right. I make all things right. I make all things right. God wants to make Amen. all things new. Thank you, my brother. Please quickly. Thank you, sir. Thank you, my friend. Brother, it is not to a man that you have stepped out. You, have you, have you, have you know, Naaman had leprosy for years. Nobody could help him. He had gone everywhere and no solution. But when she came, she only needed to dip into that pool. And there's a fountain tonight flowing. As you dip yourself in it, it's going to be a time. The disappointment you have had with yourselves 
God will do it. Lord, you can make all things new. Make all things new. Please come down. Thank you. You know, night after night, mm. God is standing because he hasn't finished. The devil is the one that says, your own is finished. No, no, no. Actually, you are the threshold of the new beginning. Thank you. Thank you. Please, I want to Thank you. Thank you. Are you are you coming hey, here? Please be quick. Okay, please stretch out your hand to God. Because the compassionate God is standing in this meeting tonight. He makes all things. Nice. The past that has been which haunting you, God will wipe it out. Go cha, habon kena chusoye, chine kege hichefia na bala. Yesterday, God has come with the blood of the Lamb. Chine kabia wo ijira bara ya isachage. To be with you, to give you new life. You make it a ho, inye go bia ho, inye gimo a ho. Father tonight, together with my brothers, my friends, sisters, we stretch forth our hands. You know where we are coming from. You know the damage that has been done. You know the wreck that the enemy wrecked us. But we hear you say, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden. Give them rest from their restlessness. Lord, things that we won't know how to sort out. But so we are bringing it to your table here tonight. We lay it down, O oh God. The favor we need, the forgiveness we need, the acceptance we will need, only comes from you. Father, tonight, come and walk again. Walk in our hearts. Take away the stony heart. Create in me a new heart. Renew a right spirit within me. Lord, I pray for men, husbands, that because of what their lives have been, they couldn't do otherwise than just fall and rise into sin. Tonight, change that story. Make all things new. What has scattered before, Father, when you came to the valley of dry bones and you asked, Son of man, can these dry bones live again? It looked impossible. He said, ah, where will I start? Where will I regard that what I have scattered? But not with God. Those scattered bones, they will live again. Lord, you will bring wholeness back to these lives, back to their families, back to their hearts in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Father, tonight, as you stretch forth your hands, they stretch forth their hands to you. Now I ask you, Lord, take those hands. Put your hand in their hands tonight. You drew men out of the dungeon, draw them out tonight. You took many of us from the Mary clay. Lord, take them out in the name of Jesus Christ. Every plan of Satan, every occultic impression upon their lives, some it is because something happened and they were tired. Tonight, by the word of God and by the anointing of the Holy Ghost, we release you from every bondage. We break every yoke in the name of Jesus Christ. Your life will be made new again. 
tonight we release you from every bondage of sin, bondage of sickness, bondage of fear, bondage of retardation, bondage of poverty. We take you out in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, these marriages that have become looking hopeless since so when they start this night bring us to a new beginning for the Bible says if any man be in Christ a new creation old things have passed away we just see the old things old life, old experiences do they see it passing off in the name of Jesus Christ? Lord, with your hands, I said, put your hand in their hands. Lift up their hands, O God. So lift up the drooping hands. And if it that is lame, you won't turn it out of the way. Lord, I'm asking that there will be restoration. And from this night particularly, there will be the joy of salvation. Thank you. Lord, once more, oh God, as we bring them words of counsel, please undertake them. Please encourage them. Let the power of the Holy Spirit fall upon them. Going out of this meeting, they are going as a brand new person. There are children that have been wondering what's happening to our parents. Lord, they will have a new story. In Jesus Christ. Amen.